After the complete elimination of a periodontal disease on tooth 2-1, this 49-year-old female patient shows a labial and palatal probing depth of approximately 7 millimeters. The radiograph indicates a bone loss of about 5 millimeters that will become fully visible after the elevation of the gingival flap. A two-wall defect can be expected. Two wall defects are a typical indication for treatment with endogain. The area has been anesthetized by local infiltration. An intracravicular incision is made with a 15C blade. The incision is extended mesiodistally to allow the elevation of a mucoperiosteal flap. Since there are no relieving incisions, good soft tissue healing can be expected. A fine respiratory is used to detach the gingiva. Then the mucoperiosteal flap is elevated using a mid-size respiratory. Trauma to the soft tissue is minimized to enhance good soft tissue healing. For accurate treatment, good access to the periodontal defect is important. Granulation tissue attached to the alveolar bone and any associated osseous defects must be removed with a curette. This removal also provides full root surface visibility and access. In this case, ultrasound is used for further root surface cleaning. Any calculus or plaque has to be completely removed. The surface cleaning could also be carried out with a curette. The same procedure is applied to the palatal area of the treatment site. In addition to the ultrasound cleaning, the root surface is cleansed and smoothened with a periodontal mill. Residues must be eliminated since they could impair the successful defect treatment with endogain. The cleansing with the periodontal mill is also done in the palatal area of the treatment site. Now the completely cleaned five millimeter deep defect is visible and ready for further treatment. First the extension incision is distally sutured using a 5-0 suture material to achieve primary closure and ideal wound stability. Pre-suturing of the soft tissue around the defect will facilitate final flap closure. Therefore, the site is prepared with modified mattress sutures using a 5-0 vicryl or supramide suture material. The mirror provides a good view of the suturing. Little mosquitoes are used to retain the thread ends and to keep the different sutures apart. Again, good pre-suturing will help tension-free primary closure that will follow later in the procedure. The central pre-suture is carried out in the same manner.
The thread end is again retained using a little mosquito. The other end of the extension incision is sutured with the same 5-0 suturing material. To get rid of any remnants, the area is rinsed with sterile saline solution. Pref gel is applied now. The needle is inserted down to the bottom of the defect. The Pref gel is then left in the defect for two minutes to remove the smear layer by root surface conditioning. Excess Pref gel flows out at the edge of the gingiva. After two minutes, the site is rinsed again with sterile saline solution. All contact with blood, or especially saliva, on the root surface should be avoided. Less experienced surgeons can perform a larger flap opening, as shown in this graphic. That can help to better protect the root surface from contamination. Strelman Emdogain comes as a ready-to-use gel in a syringe and is applied to the defect. The needle is inserted directly into the defect. The site is filled until excess emdogain flows out at the edge of the gingiva. The prepared pre-sutures are tightened in a tension-free manner for final wound closure. At this stage of the surgery, the assistance of a well-trained nurse is very helpful. The mirror view and final picture of the labial region shows good soft tissue adaptation and tension-free wound closure. Another important factor for treatment success is adequate patient instruction. For further information, read the guidelines for use carefully or contact your local Straumann representative.